as an author, it's bad enough that we have to write an entire book. But after we write the entire book, we have to market the damn thing. I mean, we also have to edit the book. But in this video, I'm talking about something that relates to marketing. And that's your author platform. Specifically, your author platform on TikTok. Growing your author platform on TikTok, especially now in 2024, with so many great author accounts, can be super difficult. But I'm here to help you out. My name is Patrick Nyland. I'm an aspiring sci-fi author. And right now, I have about 3,400 followers on my author TikTok. I realize that's not a crazy amount of followers, but that's a solid foundation. And this summer, I've gained about 1,000 followers. So while my author platform isn't huge, it has been growing stably for the past few months. Well, actually, it's been growing pretty stably since I started over a year and a half ago. I'm saying all this not to brag, but to show you I know what I'm talking about, or at least sort of. To be honest, anyone who says they know everything about growing a platform on TikTok is either lying or a bit naive. That being said, after watching this video, I think you'll have all the tools you need to replicate my relative TikTok success. This is not a video promising you to quickly gain a lot of followers by going viral. As someone who's gone somewhat viral on TikTok and Instagram a bunch of times, there's really no science into what makes something go viral. Going viral is not a social media strategy. If anything, it's a bonus for a lot of hard work. While I'm setting expectations, if your goal for your author platform is to sell a million books, then this is not the right video for you. I can tell you with almost certainty, you're not going to sell a million books on TikTok. Even if you did somehow get a million followers, it's not easy to convert followers to customers. So you might be wondering, if that's the case, why even bother starting an author talk platform? Is starting an author talk platform even worth it? Well, I will say right here, starting a writer talk is not a mandatory part of being an author, especially if you want to be a traditionally published author. That being said, I highly recommend it, especially for indie authors. Writer talk has been a great way for me to connect with other writers, get writing inspiration, and even find really great books to read. When I do eventually publish my work in progress operation arc, writer talk is going to be a huge part of that. Hopefully that happens sometime next year. But that's enough about me. How do you grow your author platform on TikTok? The first thing you need to do is identify your target audience. I know that seems somewhat obvious, but this can actually be a trap for a lot of authors out there. A lot of writers make content that's focused on other writers and their writing process, which is great, but it kind of leaves out the readers. In my mind, the ideal target audience for your author platform are the people who would want to read your book, and that includes the people who write in your genre by default. Notice that I said you should focus on your genre. There are a lot more people interested in romance than there are in sci-fi, but since I'm writing sci-fi, it doesn't really make sense for me to target romance followers. Even if it is easier to attract more romance followers, they're not going to be as valuable when I release a sci-fi book. So in my opinion, as an author, when you make content, it should be targeted at people who would like your book. Now, you may be wondering why I started this video off talking about who you should target your content towards. Patrick, this is a video about growing a following, not making better content. Well, think about it. You can't directly control who presses the follow button. Now, some creators attempt to do this by begging people to follow them or by following as many people as possible in hopes that they'll follow them back. First of all, don't do that. On a side note, only follow accounts that you enjoy. I never recommend following someone with the hopes of getting a follow back. All that follow for follow stuff doesn't work because the people who are following you are following you because they want to follow. They don't necessarily like your content. And if they're not interested in your content, that's just going to hurt your platform. What I do recommend is you find and follow fellow content creators who create content for the audience that you're targeting. And then when you look at these accounts content, take note of what you enjoy and incorporate it into your content. Shit, I kind of went off topic there. What was I talking about? Oh right, you can't force people to follow you, but you can make content that makes them more likely to follow you. The best way to gain followers is to make content that attracts followers. To do this, you want to focus on the quantity and quality of your content. For quantity, I always feel like more videos is better so long as you're not sacrificing quality. I'd rather you make one good TikTok a day than three subpar ones. If you are posting multiple TikToks per day, I recommend you wait two hours between posts, but at minimum wait at least one hour. Otherwise, you're kind of stealing views from yourself. Personally, I post every single day, and I know that seems like a lot, but after a few days, it actually starts to become a bit of a routine. That being said, a post per day might not work for you. At a minimum, though, you should be posting at least three times a week. Note that if you have a busy schedule, you can actually make a bunch of videos when you are free and then save them as drafts and post them throughout the week. Again, though, I have to emphasize how important it is to make quality content. You don't want to get into the habit of posting just for the sake of posting something. There are times where I've actually caught myself making posts for the sake of making posts, and during those times, my engagement has just tanked. A quality post is one that provides value to your audience. That value can come in the form of entertainment, inspiration, or information. I personally find entertaining posts to be the easiest to create. One way I do this is by finding funny audios and using it to make jokes about writing or my favorite genres. I also personally like to make skits, that way I'm not dependent on these audios. Inspiration can be a bit more tricky to provide, especially if you're like me and you have a terrible writing aesthetic. Still, I like to make writing challenge videos that I hope inspire people. I think a lot of people just watch those videos to watch me suffer though, which is perfectly fine, that's entertaining. A post can provide value in multiple different ways. Informative posts can include writing tips, book reviews, or even reveals about your own book. As you gain followers, they're going to be interested in what you're working on. Just be aware, this might be counterintuitive, but you don't want to post too much about your book. Especially if you're like me and you haven't finished writing it yet. I hate to say that, and I'm not saying not to talk about your book, but you have to find a balance. Or you can find a way to add more value when you talk about your projects. When I make posts talking about my writing journey, I try to add humor or motivation. And the reason I do this is because it gives the viewer a reason to care. 
Big authors can get away with just talking about their book because everyone's excited about them already. If you are watching this video, that means you're probably not a big author, which means you have to get your readers excited. Now, there will be points where your posts do not get the views you're hoping for. In that case, it can be really easy to blame the evil algorithm, but there's no point in that. Like with people pressing the follow button, you can't control the algorithm. That being said, while we can't control it, we can understand it. The algorithm's job is to provide viewers with content that keeps them on the app as long as possible. It does that by providing content that other similar viewers engage with. If your account is not getting the views you desire, look inward. Take time to look at your old videos and see how you can improve. Or compare them to the popular videos of creators within your niche. I've actually found that the difference between a 20,000 view video and a 200 view video can be very small. Sometimes it's as simple as bad lighting or not bringing enough energy to the beginning of the video. Also take note of the video length and watch time. I've noticed a lot of creators tend to drag videos along. I try to make my videos as short as I possibly can. That being said, I've posted three minute TikToks before. That just means for that video, I needed three minutes. If people are clicking off your TikTok in the first two to five seconds, that might mean you need a better hook. Think about when you start a book, you need to hook the reader. This is supposed to be a hook. A hook does not need to be anything crazy either. It can be something as simple as text that piques the viewer's interest, or a prop or energy that you bring to the beginning of the video. While we're talking about little things like this, I also recommend that you have a caption that relates to the video. People talk about SEO a lot, they make it to be this big scary thing, that's all it is. Have your caption relate to the content of the video, that's it. If there are particular words like plot or sci-fi that you're using in the video, be sure to include it in the caption. That's all there is to it. No need to buy some $200 course from some tech bro. Do not buy courses on how to grow on social media. They're a waste of money. I went off topic again. Going back to captions, another thing I like to do is ask a question in the caption. This is an easy and natural way to attract comments in your posts and start conversations. I also like to put a few hashtags, not too many, but a few hashtags that are related to the topic of the video. Key term, related. And by a few, I'm talking six or seven, nothing crazy. A lot of times my captions will be something simple like writer, writing a book, sci-fi. All hashtags really do is help the algorithm push your content to the right people. So if you're using hashtags like trending, viral, and for you page, you're kind of missing the point. Hashtags like that will find the wrong audience, and as a result, they won't engage with your post, which will tell the algorithm that's a bad post. Finally, since I mentioned engagement, engage with other people. It's social media, after all. Comment on fellow accounts in your niche. When people take the time to comment on your post, respond to their comments. And I'm not saying just like their comment. Actually take time to respond to their comment. Not only does this make you come across as a real, genuine person and not someone who's just obsessed with gaining as many followers as possible, but it also encourages people to comment again in the future. Also, feel free to DM fellow authors and make connections. Your author platform is a community intertwined with so many other communities, and you want to be a part of as many of those communities as you possibly can. Speaking of comments and author communities, if you have any questions on how to grow your author platform that I haven't answered in this video, be sure to ask them below. I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my ability. If you don't already, be sure to follow me on TikTok and keep me posted on how these tips work for you. Finally, feel free to self-promote your author platform in the comments of this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Good luck with growing your author platform on TikTok.